when it comes to the IPPs and the state-owned enterprises that deal with energy, we found a solution to those areas, and that was ESLA. In fact, part of the ESLA flows was to be used to resolve the problems of the IPPs. Because I'm not going to go into, you know, who costs what and the rest, which we have been debating, you know, but the, the rest was there, right? We know today, and we started using it to, for example, tackle VRA debt, you know, which, why VRA? Because during the doomsday crisis, it was VRA, you know, because of the lack of supply of gas from Nigeria, they had to buy, you know, crude oil at expensive prices to generate the power. You know, the IPPs produced, you know, they were not paid. So ESLA was a resolve that. And I have to say that if you look at the ESLA revenue that is coming, you know, uh, flowing, 33 billion Ghana cities to date, and another 33 billion, and I'm quoting from the ESLA report, the goal of using ESLA to resolve those arrears should have been achieved. Of course, when I say 33 billion and 66, we also had the contractors element, road, enhanced road levy and the rest. So those arrears were to have been, you know, paid. The, whether who caused it or not. What did we do? We collateralized it, right? And today, the flows are not even enough to pay for the loan, collateralization is the loan that we took, right? And we have found ESLA as part of the domestic debt restructuring. So, so this is the point I'm making that we should just remain faithful to the goals and ideals. And remember, ESLA was debated in parliament extensively. And it, was, it would have taken three to five years, including the IPPs. So it's a problem that we brought onto ourselves. And I think that, I mean, the government brought it to itself. And I think it is important that, you know, we reach an amicable, you know, solution.